Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we will discuss about one more concept in discrete mathematics that is a chromatic number in a graph coloring. Chromatic number. So in our previous session we have discussed about the graph coloring. So which means we need to color the graph that means we have to color the vertices such that no two vertices should be having the same color filled with the same color so for example if a graph is having a four vertices right if a graph is having a four vertices we can color all the vertices with the different colors so we can color with a red green blue and yellow so if a graph is having a one more vertex so you can also color with a pink so the number of vertices i mean we can use a number of colors for a number of vertices so that's not the correct so we have to fill the vertices or we have to color the vertices with a minimum number of colors okay we should not use a multiple colors so simply we can uh, color the graph with a different uh, colors for all the different vertices that's not a correct right so we need to require a minimum number of colors so minimum number sorry minimum number of colors required to color the vertices right such that no two adjacent vertices should fill with the same color and this is called as a chromatic number this is called as a chromatic number so chromatic number means the number of colors that means a minimum number of colors are required to color the vertices such that no two adjacent vertices should be filled with the same color now see hope you understood this is the thing minimum number of colors is called the chromatic number and this is usually represented it is usually represented as similar to x okay x of g okay g where g is a graph where g is a graph x of g if if the chromatic number is 2 that implies okay if, if the chromatic number is 2 that implies it requires a two colors to color the vertices so that is represented with x of 2 that means two colors are required to color the graph now there are few properties to find out the minimum number of colors right to find the uh, graph coloring uh, chromatic number so first one if graph is a cycle graph if a graph is a cycle graph then chromatic number x of g so it is represented as x of g right depends upon depends upon parity of cycle length so don't worry if you are not getting the complete idea about this i'll explain now if a graph is a cycle graph when we will be calling it as a cycle graph right so if a graph is drawn with n vertices and n edges that means the number of vertices and number of edges should be same then it is called as a cycle graph okay both vertices and edges are same then we call it as a cycle graph now in such thing if it is having odd parity of cycle length then the chromatic number will be 3 and it, if it is having even parity of cycle length chromatic number will be 2 now what is this odd parity and even parity 
So, for example, let us take this A, B, C. Now, check out vertices. How many vertices are there? 1, 2, 3. Edges. How many edges are there? 1, 2, and 3. So, this is a cycle graph because number of edges are 3, number of vertices are 3. Now, form a cycle here. So, A to B, B to C, C to A. Right? So, how many, what is the cycle length? 1, 2, and 3. In 3 steps, a cycle forms. So, the cycle length, cycle length is equal to 3. So, which is an odd number. That we call it as an odd parity. Now, how many, what is a uh, chromatic number of this particular graph is obviously 3. That means, uh, check out this one. If A is filled with red, B and C should not be filled with red. So, I will go with the green here. If A is filled with red, C should not be filled with red. And if B is filled with green, C should not be filled with red or green. So, obviously, we need to take it. another uh, color that is a blue. Okay. So, you can see all the three vertices will be filled with a different colors. So, minimum colors required to fill this odd parity cycle length is a 3. Okay. Now, let us take one more example. Let us take one more example. <coughs> Excuse me. A to B, B to C and C to D. So, once again check here. Number of vertices 1, 2, 3, 4. Number of edges 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 edges. So, obviously this will be the cycle graph. Okay. Now, the cycle length. What is the cycle length? You can observe. So, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 steps. So, first, second, third and fourth. So, in 4 steps, it forms a cycle length. So, what is the length here, cycle length? It is a 4, which is an even number. That means even parity. So, how many colors it requires? X of G, chromatic number. 2 colors are required to fill the vertices. Now, check. If, it is, if A is filled with red, B and D should not be filled with red. I will go with a green here. Now, C. C is filled with, uh, I mean, C adjacents are D. <coughs> Excuse me. C adjacents are D and B. Here, B is filled with green. C cannot be filled with green. And you can fill with red because A is filled with red, which is not adjacent to C. Now, D. D adjacents are A and C, which are filled with red. So, D can be filled with green. So, how many minimum required? Minimum colors required. Only two colors are required to fill this particular graph with the even parity. So, you can just remember this one. Uh, if if it is a cycle graph, that means if it is if a graph is having both uh, vertices and edges equal, then the cycle length depends upon the cycle length, the parity. We can decide the minimum number of colors required to fill the graph. Right. So, hope you understood. And similar to this one, there are a few more points. So, I will write here cycle length. Okay. Next, if a graph is a complete graph, complete graph means any distinct vertices will be having the edge. Okay, any distinct vertices will be having the edge. Then the chromatic number will be, sorry, number of vertices. Vertices, right? If one vertex is having the edges towards all the remaining vertices of the graph, that is we call it as a complete graph. In such complete graphs, Simply you can say the chromatic number, the minimum number of colors required is the number of vertices involved in that particular graph. And similarly, if a graph is bipartite, bipartite graph, then 
the chromatic number minimum colors required is two so bipartite means the complete vertices will be divided into two sets and there will be no edge between the vertices of same set but there will be an edge between the vertices of different sets in such cases the chromatic number is only two that means it requires only two colors for coloring the graph and similarly if a graph is planar graph planar graph then chromatic number will be less than or equal to four less than or equal to four that means it requires not more than four colors for coloring the planar graph planar graph we know that so if any graph is having a vertices without any edge crossings or intersections we call it as a planar graph such kind of planar graphs obviously we can go with the four less than or equal to four so without the calculation by observing the graph type we can decide the chromatic number okay so if the chromatic number is equal to two it is called as a bicolored graph bicolored graph because it requires only two colors to uh, fill the vertices and if the chromatic number is three it is called three colored graph three colored graph okay similarly if the chromatic number is n which is called as n colored graph n colored graph so here n means the chromatic number n means a chromatic number right so by observing the graph we we can able to know minimum how many how many colors required to fill the vertices to color the vertices such that no two adjacent vertices should be filled with the same color right yes so hope you understood about this chromatic number and if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i'll try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much